Apartheid, internment, conscription, partition, and silence. It's a law that they make to keep you and me where they think we belong. They hide behind steel and bulletproof glass, machine guns and spies. And they tell us who suffer the tear gas and the torture that we're in the wrong. No time for love if they come in the morning No time to show tears or for fears in the morning No time for goodbye, no time to ask why And the sound of the sirens, the cry of the morning They suffer the torture, they rotted in cells When crazy wrote letters and died The limits of pain they endured but the loneliness got them instead And the courts give them justice As justice is given by well-mannered thugs Sometimes they fought for the will to survive But more times they just wish they were dead No time for love if they come in the morning No time to show tears if her fears in the morning No time for goodbye, no time to ask why and the sound of the sirens, the cry of the morning. They took away young Francis Hughes and his cousin to McElwee as well. They came for Patsy O'Hara and Bobby Sands and some of his friends. In Boston, Chicago, Saigon, San Diego, Warsaw and Belfast. And places that never make headlines, the list never ends No time for love if they come in the morning No time to show tears if her fears in the morning No time for goodbye, no time to ask why And the sound of the sirens, the cry of the morning The boys in blue are only a few of the everyday cops on their beat the CID branch men, the Blacks and the Gilmores do their jobs as well. Behind them, the men who tap phones, take photos, program computers and files. And the man who tells them when to come and take you to your cell. No time for love if they come in the morning. No time to show tears if her fears in the morning. No time for goodbye, no time to ask why And the sound of the sirens, the cry of the morning Come on you people and give to your sisters and brothers the will to fight on They say you can get used to a war That doesn't mean that the war isn't on That squad can only get through to them If first they can get through to you No time for love if they come in the morning No time to show tears if her fears in the morning No time for goodbye, no time to ask why And the sound of the sirens The cry of the morning 
Finish the sound of the sirens, the cry of the morning, or the sound of the sirens, the cry of the during the height of the blanket protest in 1978 and during the meeting Christy asked the prisoners is there anything you could do to help them and they asked them would you be able to write a song to tell the, the outside world about what we were experiencing in the plight of the Republican prisoners in, in the H-Block so Christy went then and, and wrote this song uh, 90 Miles from Dublin I'm 90 miles from Dublin town, I'm in an H-block cell. To help you understand my plight, this story now I'll tell. I'm on a blanket protest, my efforts mustn't fail. I'm joined by men and women in long flesh and armor tail. It all began one morning I was dragged to Castle Ray. Although it was three years ago, it seems like yesterday. For three days kicked and beaten, I then was forced to sign a confession that convicted me of an act that wasn't mine. Sentenced in the devil of court, my protest began. I could not wear their prison gear, I was a blanket man. I'll not accept their status, and I won't be criminalised. That's the issue in Long Cash, 
for which men gave their lives. Over there in London town, oh how they laugh and sneer. Oh, the they could only make us wear their loathsome prison gear. Prisoners of war, that's what we are, and that we must remain. The blanket protest cannot end till status we regain. I've been beaten round the wrong room because I won't say sir. I've been frog marched on the land and I'm pulled back by the hair. I suffered degradation, humility and pain. Still our spirits will not falter, British torture is in vain. I've been held in scalding water while my skin with neck scrubs was tore. I've been punched and cut from head to foot and pulled back by the hair. I suffered degradation, humility and pain. Still our spirits will not falter, British torture is in vain. Now with the news that's coming in, our protest cannot fail. For now we're joined by 30 girls in our women's jail. So pay attention Irish men and Irish women too. And so the free state government that their silence will not do. For I'm ninety miles from Dublin town, it seems so far away. There's more attention to our plight in the USA. So now you've heard my story of this filthy living hell. Remember ninety miles away I'm still in my hate block cell. Yes, remember ninety miles away I'm still in my hate block cell. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for that, Liam. I'd like to now call on uh, the main speaker here at John Fearn today, um, Raymond McCartney. Uh, Raymond was on the blanket of the No Ice protest as well uh, with, with John back in the day, and he was on the first hunger strike as well. So I'd like to ask Raymond to come forward to uh, say a few words. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Uh, Declan, <coughs> it is but but why not? Our kids cove run a horse the clan John Fissy, a poor bass Jahinya Shukaicha, Thomas and Shaw a Kimney er John er Wack, mar Yarher mar Far Kelly mar Aher mar Uncle mar Kara mar Kamriha, ta our kids mass roof. On behalf of the Republican family here in West Tyrone and beyond, I want to offer our sincere sympathies to you all, the family circle of John Fissy, and to his many friends and comrades. To his wife Irene, his daughters Charlotte and Shauna, to his brothers and sisters Mary, Frank, Raymond, Kathleen, Gertie, Anna, Eugene, Dez, Monica, and his late brother Peter. And to all your families. Ta Shiv, August Ta Shiv, in our Sminchi, Igam Ambrunak Shaw, 
Sassy Mitch Lipsha, the Kilia. No words that I will speak here today will convey that great sense of loss that you now feel. But I hope that all of us being here with you will in some way provide you with some comfort and solace in the time ahead. And know this, that all of us who knew John are proud to call him a friend and a comrade. Just during a week past, Declan contacted me to say that John was poorly. Declan had always mentioned him to me over the years. Indeed, we often remarked, and I know Charlotte referred to this this morning, he called him John, I always referred to him as Sean. I suppose that was a long cash solution to a particular problem. Otherwise, we would have ended up with two lads nicknamed JT on the wing. There was already John Thomas from Belfast, so legend had it, Sean became Sean, and thereafter, Sean T. Only in long cash, as they say. Yet, on Friday, when I was told that he had passed away, it still came as a bit of a shock. There are people who know John way better than me, but yet, he is one of those people in life that you share a certain time, a certain place, and similar experiences. That a bond forms and endures, even when life over the years takes us in different directions and journeys. For us, as with many others, it was a wing in the hits blocks of Long Cash, the blanket protest and the hunger strike. John Tracy, Sean T was very much part of that, that seminal time in our lives. For him, it was there, present and in front of him, and he stood strong and withstood it all, surrounded by his friends and comrades. Shashi Mids of the Kilia Mariner. From the town land of Cashel here in County Tyrone, proud of his home place, rich in the traditions of the Gael and Republicanism, proud of his parents Frank and Annie, who raised their eleven children on their values of respect, integrity, caring and looking out for others. For them, living life for his experience is the best teaching of all. Sean was of a generation who had watched how nationalists were deprived of rights and opportunities. People like his parents, his siblings, how the civil rights movement provided the hope to a path to end discrimination and second class citizenship. He witnessed the brutality of the state on those who dared to march on our streets and country lanes. They were met with force, internment without trial, Bala Murphy, Bloody Sunday, and then John and his generation declaring that now was our time to bring it to an end. He joined the ranks of Oglin the Heron, and like many of his generation, he was soon interned in the cages of Long Cash and spent a period in Mountjoy Prison in Dublin. After release, he committed himself to activism and was arrested with his good friend and neighbour, Paddy O'Hagan, beaten in golf barracks, tried and sentenced in the Fiblock Court, and then they share a cell for many, many years. But both John and Paddy joined the blanket protest to fight for the right to be treated as political prisoners. And I knew them for the first couple of months as John and Paddy Malone, the naive dairy man, how, how was that? I know any different. Despite the barbarity of the hiss blocks, the beatings, mental and physical torture, they did not bend. In hits five, John met Many are prisoners, including Bobby Sands and Joe McDonald, and he was very supportive of them, and fellow Tyrone man Martin Hurston, who then went on and subsequently died in the 1981 hunger strike. John was always mindful of their sacrifice. He was solid throughout his time in prison, right up to his release, protecting our rights, won as political prisoners by our ten comrades. On his release, seeking to give himself and his family and time better opportunities, he decided to go to the US and to New York to seek work. While he was there, he was very much part of the Irish American community and a proud member of Clan the Gale. Fiercely proud of his family, of his daughters, you were his guiding stars, and I hope to today you all take some solace from the words and stories told about him. He wished only that you would have many of the opportunities that were denied to him and that we would live fulsome lives. This he shared with you, Erin. 
Over the past few days, many stories have been told of him, and I hope these stories all bind together and remind us and you of the man that John Tracy was. Indeed, the gifts at the altar follow Donnelly's eulogy and Charlotte's beautiful testimony gives uh, some substance to that. And let's visit who, who but John Tracy or Sean T could bring Johnny Cash, James Joyce, Christy Moore, and Dylan Thomas all in the, in the one place at the one time. But no matter where he found himself, he was loyal to his Republican beliefs. He had an ability to embrace change and continue in our collective effort to drive an end to partition. He understood and appreciated the great gift of comradeship and in recent years, despite his failing health, he was very frail, but, but he gathered that undoubted resolve to be part of his own comrades, Vincent Donnelly's Guard of Honour. Now, of course, people will ask, what was it or why was it uh, that someone like John, who sought no favour and yet found a strength to stand up, regardless of the odds pitted against him for what he believed in? So always remember this, in words left this by Bobby Sands, words that describe it so eloquently. It lights the dark of this prison cell, it thunders forth its might. It is that undauntable thought, my friend, that thought that says I'm right. So now, Sean, Slana Wilja, John Trissy, rest in peace. Guru, Mila Mayogat, Awun Kara, Gulir. Guru Mayogat. Gorm my yoga daker. Um, listen, folks, I, I'll not keep you as much longer. I know we are, these are all probably founder right there. Um, but I think we can all agree we've got a bit of a founder for that man thinking of what he went through in the cells back in the day. Um, but listen, just on behalf of the family, I want to thank you all very much for making the, the taking the time to come here today, taking the time to come to the house uh, and visit. Um, I want to pay, pay special, special thanks, folks, to Father Donnelly for lovely moss. I want to thank Jerry for the music on the side. I want to thank um, young Lapin here from South Armagh, Liam, uh, who sung here as well. Um, thank also uh, you know, Raymond from coming from Derry, uh, shared, shared time with him as well. Uh, I want to thank his comrades as well, um, from Donegal, John, and our former MP, Pat, beside me here, and our present MP, um, Orla Begley, or Orla Kjarsen, maybe now I should say, who's here too. So I want to thank them all um, for, for, for coming here today uh, and, and being here. Uh, I suppose this, this last few years, John hasn't, has been in poor health. And we want to thank anyone who cared for him over, over that period. And, uh, you know, particularly the family. I think it goes right saying, my Uncle Des, for the time and effort and up and down the road and the time that he spent the day uh, with, with John in his, in his final days. And, uh, you know, I think, I think he deserves a lot for that there. It's been a tough year for him. And uh, I think he deserves a special mention. Um, on top of that, <clears throat> I want to thank John O'Brien um, for you know the Trone Commemoration Committee um, for organising you know all around with such dignity from start to finish for for organising a guard of honour you know during the week and, and today. And uh, you know he, the man deserved it, such dignity, and I want to thank you personally for that, John, and organising that. It meant a lot to us as a family. So, folks, just one final thing: you are all very welcome down to the to the Mill Wheel and done a more uh, for a bit. Maybe, maybe we're all like a wee bottle of Heineken <laughs> for John as well, in memory of him as well. So, listen, folks, again, go and meet him, meet him, my yogurt for everyone for for coming today and and giving John the send off that he deserved. Thank you very much. We just asked for the, maybe the flag to be um, taken off and presented to the family here before we pay our own the vein. Shang 